In this lesson, I'm going to teach logical operators, um, else if statements and else statements. So let's start with a logical operator. A logical operator, uh, it's kind of similar to um, what you may call it, comparison operators. It's not a comparison operator, but it's similar. I'm just going to make three uh, variables of type integer. We'll call it number one, number two, and number three. We'll have them all have different values and yeah there we are so let's start with a and and operator otherwise known as the and logical operator so let's say we want um the if statement to only be true if two conditions are true so let's say that i want number one to be more than eight and and less than 10 okay so, which would have to be now we'll, we'll put less than 13 because that gives us a good range so essentially what i'm saying here is is number one more than number eight is number one more than value eight which it is because it's nine and is number one also less than the value 13 which it is because 9 is less than 13. now if this is true and this is true then this condition has been met so the code should be executed so we're going to say num1 is more than 8 and less than 13. So we'll try that and it works and essentially it only works if both of these statements here if both of these things that have comparison operators in them are true so if the item on the left is true and the item on the right is true then the and and logical operator has been satisfied to show you what i mean we're going to ask if number one is more than eight and and num one is we'll say equal to ten then we'll print that num one is more than eight and is equal to ten okay now clearly num1 is not equal to 10 num1 is actually equal to 9 it's definitely more than 8 however it is not equal to 10 so num1 is not more than 8 and also equal to 10 it's just more than 8 so this should fail because the and and wants both the left item and the right item to be true in order for the uh, and operator condition to be met so this shouldn't print out and it doesn't if i run it, it doesn't print out nothing happens and um, because only one of these two statements is true so if less than all of the statements involved in an and operator are true then um the it won't run essentially it won't be true it'll come out as a false result and here this condition will, will be false so it doesn't print whereas here nine is both more than eight and less than 13 so this does run this bit of code here does run okay that's it that's all there is with an and operator next operator would be the or operator so here we'll say if num2 is less than 12 and then we put these two like i don't know what you call them vertical dashes or num2 is more than uh, 20 then we can print that num2 is less than 12 comma or num2 is more than 20. in this case it's 32 so it's more than 20 but it's not less than 12 and this is why it's called or essentially only one of these here on the left or the right hand side has to be true so even though number two is not less than 12 
this would still equate to being true. The condition would still be true um, because this can be correct or this can be right. They don't have to both be correct. Only one of them needs to be correct in order for this to uh, run. So if I run it, you should see that this is printed out because at least one of these two conditions is true here. Yeah, at least one of them has been met. So overall, this statement is true. Now, if I, the only time that this is incorrect is when both of the um, statements on either side of the or uh, logical operator are untrue. So we'll say if number two, which is 32, is less than 12, which is not, or is more than 45, which it isn't, then we'll print something. Okay. And this shouldn't actually print out because neither of these two statements here is true because number two is actually 32 as seen up there right so we're going to print out num2 is less than 12 or num2 is more than 45 quite simple and when we run it hey why isn't it printing it's not printing because neither of these two are true as I said, only one of these two um, uh, conditions needs to be met in order for this overall statement to be true. However, if none are met, then it's not true here because just one of them is met. This overall statement is true, but here, because none of them are met, this overall statement is not true. Okay. Now, one more is if num3 not equal to. So what is num3 at the moment? I think it's 2, yeah. So we'll say if num3 not equal to 4, then we print num3 is not equal to 4. And here, all we're saying is if the item on the left isn't the same as the item on the 4, then this condition is true, okay? It's true that number three is not equal to four and number three is actually equal to two. So it is definitely true that it's not equal to four, right? So if I run this, it should print num three is not equal to four. And there we are, right? Now then, the only time this is not correct is when the thing is equal to the thing, the thing on the left is equal to the thing on the right, okay? So number three, because the value is two, is equal to Two, right so if we ask if number if we say if number three is not equal to two then this is then this is true in this case it's false because number three is equal to two and it's not the opposite of itself right it's not inverse true so this here we're saying number three is not equal to two this won't print because number three is equal to two okay so it's not not equal to itself it's only equal to itself and here we go running that you can see it's not true right so basically i'll go over it again one more time with an and statement all the conditions in the and statement must be true in order for the overall condition to be met and be true which is why this prints and this doesn't okay in the or statement only one of the uh one of the items involved in the or statement has to be true okay because here number two is more than 20 even though number two is not less than 12 this does execute because at least one of the uh, state of the comparisons is true here it doesn't execute because none of these two uh, statements are true so not not one is true. we only need one but if there isn't at least one then it's not true right here if uh, it's not equal to something if it, if a variable or a number or whatever is not equal to the other thing then the statement is true so in this case number three is equal to two but it's not equal to four and we ask we say if it's not equal to four then this is true in this case it isn't so this is true in this case it is equal to two and so this is not true that it's not equal to itself okay and that's pretty much all there is for logical operators you know you may want to make a few of them yourselves just to kind of go over the concept a little bit more 
Right then, let's get on to if and else if statement. So we can say if number 3 is equals equals 9, then do something. So we'll say print num3 is equal to 9. Right. What if we don't want this to be the end of the if statement? What if we want an alternative? So let's say else if num3 is less than 9, then we'll print num3 is less than 9 here, right? Now, you'll see that this won't print, but the else if will print, okay? We can also put an else statement, but I'll get to that in a minute. Now, I'm going to put if num3 equals equals 2, then we can print num3 is equal 2, right? I'm going to put an else if after this, and we're going to say else if num3 is more than 1, print num3 is more than 1. Let's see what happens. What's going to get printed? What? Is that all that got printed? Just that number 3 is equal to 2. What? This is also true. Okay, so the way that an else if works is essentially the else if is attached to whatever if there is above it. Okay, so this elf, else if statement is not separate from this if statement. It's actually essentially a part of this if statement. See this if statement here. If this is true then everything after it that's not just a regular if statement will not be executed. So the else if statement will not be executed here. Right. Similarly, if I make an if statement, I can actually make several else ifs. So I can say if number two less than 12, which it's not, I think it's, I think it's 32. Then we print num2 is less than 12. Okay, so we've got that. We can make an else if. We can say else if num2 is more than 12. Okay, then we'll print num2 is more than 12, right? Now, let's say we want another else if. We want to say else if num2 is more than 20, which it is then print num2 is more than 20. Quite simple. What do you think is going to be printed? Well, let's run it and have a look. Only this. So how this works is, basically, you have an if statement, right? And every single if statement is separate to every single other statement, okay? It's an, each if statement is not attached to another if statement. All the if statements are independent of each other. However, the else ifs are all dependent of an if statement, right? So we can kind of consider all of this as all the same thing. And basically, until you reach a regular if statement, the else ifs and the else's, they never, they never stop. And once one of these conditions is met, that is the condition that, that is run, okay? So what I mean by this is we've got three items here, okay? We've got the if statement, which is the main thing, and we have two else ifs, right? If any of these three are true, this terminates this whole, like, if, else, if statement, like, like, like line, essentially, right? So these are all one thing. If any of these conditions are met, then the rest of the conditions don't run. So, for example, if you look at number 2, it's 32. And it is more than, 30, more than 20, right? But we don't see that printed out. And the reason is, this is basically all one block, right? If any of these are true, 
then the next item in the block or the items after that that are in the same block of statements will not run. So here, for example, the machine checks is number two less than 12. No, it isn't. So this isn't true. OK, now this is an else if and it says, is this true? Yes, it's more than 12. And it says, OK, that's the end of this block. And even though this is true, it doesn't run it because only one item from the block is run. The first item that's true within the block is the one that's run. The rest of it is ignored. So if the if statement is true, the if statement's run. OK, if that's not true, then the next statement is then checked. If the next statement is true, then that's run. If the next statement is true, then the statement after it isn't run. OK, because we've already had one condition in the block uh, that's true, right? So the third condition, even though it's true, won't be run because it's in the same block. The only way that a block is terminated is if something else, for example, a variable is created or an if statement is put there. But if a further else if or an else statement is put on, it counts as the same block. All right. I can prove this by writing another if statement. So we'll say if number two is more than 12, print num2 is more than 12, right? If you actually look at this, this will print out even though this one doesn't print out because it's part of a different block, okay? So the first one here print, prints out the else if. This can't be printed out here because it's part of this same if block or if else if block, but this is printed out because it's part of a different block, right? So that's if and else if. There's one more item that's part of the block, and it's called else. Okay, so we've got if, let's say, what was num1? I think num1 was 9. Okay, so we'll say if num1 is less than 9, then do something. It isn't, but we'll just say print num1 is less than 9. Okay. Simple enough. We'll say else if num1 is more than 9, uh, which it can't be because num1 is 9. Okay, we'll print num1 is more than 9. Okay, there's one more statement within the if else if and else block and it's called if else if and else else is the very last one right and we'll just say else okay that's all there is there's no argument given to else and we'll just print num1 is not more than nine or less than nine okay now what an else is is basically in the if, else if, or just if and else block, if none of the conditions are met within the block, then we just do whatever's in the else uh, bracket of code. So you'll see that we'll get this num1 is not more than 9 or less than 9. It's the very last print statement. So let's see what I mean by that. The else block is run when none of the other, when none of the other uh, statements in the block are true. So this is all treated as one block, right? Until we put another if or we put a variable or something that's outside of the else if and else uh, statement parameters, right? The first item in the block isn't true. Okay, so this isn't, this isn't executed. The second item isn't true. Now else just says if these two, if neither of the things above in the uh, if, else if or whatever, statement block aren't true then just do this so this is saying if none of this above is true then print this that number one is not more than nine or less than nine okay so we're saying else if none of this is true right do this it's basically saying else other condition that isn't these conditions do this that's why it's called else so else is a cover all in case something in your block doesn't work we don't have to use else if uh, with else. We can actually just use if and else. So we can say if, I don't know, if num1 
is more than nine. Which we can put print num one is more than nine, which it isn't. So we both we all know that this isn't going to work. However, else will cover everything else. So else just says if it's not anything in this block, which is just the if and the else, then do this. So we're going to print num one is not more than nine. And you'll see because nothing else in the statement was executed, this will be executed. And that's all an else statement does. It just executes if the rest of the statement block doesn't execute. And that's it. You know, you've got your else ifs, you've got your ifs, and you've got your elses. I'll quickly go over everything we've done because it was quite a long lesson, quite a uh, intensive one. And then I'll stop there. So we made our three variables which we use to compare with other things. And then we did the AND statement, okay? We did the AND uh, logical operator. And here with an AND, we're saying, if the item on the left and the item on the right are both true, then this statement overall is true, okay? Here, number one, because it's nine, is both more than eight and less than 13. So this executes. And the second one, number 9, is more than 8, but it's not equal to 10. So this doesn't execute. With the ands, with the and operator, both things have to be true. Okay? This isn't the same for the or operator, which is these two lines like this in Swift. As long as one or the other is true, then this statement as a whole is true. Here in the first one, Number two is 32, so it's more than 20. It's not less than 12, but it doesn't matter because only one of these two items has to be true. And since number two is more than 20, this statement as a whole is true. Okay, so this executes. Here, uh, it doesn't execute because number two, 32, is not less than 12 and it's not more than 45. Okay, at least one of these conditions must be satisfied in an or statement, okay? Here we have number three, which is actually equal to two. Because two is not equal to four, this is true. We're saying, is two not equal to four, i.e. is number two not equal to four? Yes, it isn't equal to four. It is not equal to four, therefore this is true, okay? Not equals two is the reserve, like a reverse equals, okay? And because number two is not equal to four, it's true that number two is not equal to four, that two is not equal to four. So this will execute. Here we're asking, is number three not equal to two? Okay, and since number three is, is the value two, we're saying, is two not equal to two? Of course, two is equal to two. So the inverse of two being two, being true, is not true, okay? So here, this isn't true, and this doesn't execute. And then here we're just using an else if. We're saying if number three is equal to nine, then print this out. And here, number three, number three is not equal to nine, so we can't print that out. Um, number three is also not equal to, it's not less than nine, so that shouldn't have been printed out there. Oh, it is printed out. Oh yeah, sorry, it's two. It's two, number three is two, sorry. Yeah, so, Number three is two, so it's not equal to nine. So this if statement doesn't execute. This one does because it's less than nine. So the else if statement inside the if else if block then executes, right? And this second one here, number three is equal to two. Uh, so this if and the else if executes. However, the second one doesn't execute because only one item in the entire block will execute. And since this first condition was met and was true, then we print number three is equal to two, but we don't print number three is more than one, as we can see here. And this will be the same for the other else if. You can see that ifs are all, st all separate from other ifs, but the else ifs and the elses are all in an if block, right? And essentially, if any item within the block, you know, is true, then that will be, you know, the code within that will be executed and the rest of the code will be ignored until you get to another if block or 
another piece of code. That's it. Quite complicated, but don't worry, I'll comment all of this uh, for the file, the GitHub. Thanks for watching, hope you enjoyed.